What's going on guys? Welcome back to another vlog. Super exciting. Uh, we've been in North Dakota for the summer and we are on our way back now officially to go back to Arizona for the for the winter and we are moving into our dream apartment that we've been manifesting for how long now? Over four, four years. years. This specific place, three years, um, but they have one in South Scottsdale that's very similar in that. Um, we originally wanted to move into because we didn't realize this one had like apartments. We thought it was just condos. So we toured it three years ago and this is the one we've been set on for the last three years, but four years wanting to move into like these complexes. But we're gonna head and head back and bring you guys on this two day journey driving 24 hours. Cars and, uh, packed. Cars packed, absolutely packed. Pax is back there somewhere. Piper's back there, as you can see. She has more room than this, but she's just very clingy and nervous and excited all in one. Um, yeah, this is gonna be exciting and life-changing and just the beginning. If any of you have been here since the beginning, you probably remember us talking about this place. You <clears throat> know that we have been foreshadowing our future for a long time and talking about it. So we're really, blessed and happy and excited for any of you who have been here since the very beginning to watch this journey um, and for you who have just found us then um, you're in for a treat because this is just the beginning of this phase of our life. So. Piper are you going bye bye? So are you going for a car ride? Are you going back home? Are you sitting up front? Are you going for a car ride? We're about two and a half hours into the drive. Um, at least it's light out now, but about one tenth of the way there. Hot pipe. She's been crazy this whole time, huh? She's sitting on me for a while and now she doesn't want to sit in her cocoon back there, but now you guys can see just how packed things are. Paxton's back here, you can't really see him, but he's zonked. And uh, she has her spot. my spot. Tanner's mom likes to give us a lot of snacks and stuff so I'm holding like a lot of stuff up front. I have like no room. But it's good. We're making it there and that's all that matters. Hush hush. Are you going for car rides? Are you cool? Bye bye. Cool. Bye bye. Taking a little break. We just got to Casper, Wyoming. Let Piper go to the bathroom, and now we're gonna go check out. Um, if you know who Jeffrey Star is, um, he has a store here in Casper. Actually, we just found out he sells makeup it and yak meat. So this is the second time we've been there, and we got four kinds of jerky. They're having like a sale, so we decided to get some. Jeffrey um, wasn't there. Yeah, he wasn't there. So this one, what the heck was this one? This is the peppered one, so that one's yours. And then we got pressed jalapeno, Paxton wanted that one. We got uncured garlic and black pepper. And then we got pressed dill pickle. So Paxton, which one should we try? Uh, fresh. The garlic? Uh, no, not dill pickle, garlic. You want the garlic one? Yeah. Okay. We'll try those two for now. Just the regular pepper and then the garlic. Like didn't open very well. It's alright, I'll probably eat all of it. They should have like a Carolina Reaper one. For yeah, that one would be spicy. Pepper is not too bad. Pepper? I'll try pepper too. Definitely smells like garlic. Here, guys. What the heck? This is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, this is yak meat. I don't know if I said that. Yeah, it's yak meat. Apparently it's one of the healthiest red meats because they have, um, like so much oxygen, I think I don't I can't remember what the explanation was, but it's better for you than like can she have a bite? it's leaner. Yeah, she can have a little bite. You want some yak? <laughs> I like it. This is pretty good. It's like tame. Yeah. Five five five. five. Oh my, my rating of the garlic one. Yeah, we got about probably five out of ten. No. Five and a half hours to go. Yeah, then we'll be in um Grand Just got to Colorado. We are making good progress. I think we're probably um, three yeah three hours away. <sighs> yeah, so not too much longer today. I think th thirteen and a half hours today. Nine hours tomorrow. So today is the hard day. Tomorrow will be. 
be a cakewalk, but I think the nice drive is like here in Colorado, and then once you get to Flagstaff, Flagstaff in Arizona is nice. Utah's not too bad. Utah's not too bad. Yeah, but um, the stretch from North Dakota through Wyoming is like kind of boring, but we made it past that boring part. Now it's just Colorado. Um, we're going to listen to some podcasts and um, just crank the rest of it out. It's uh, next morning and I am burnt out, but I got a good night's sleep. What about you, Max? And Tress. <laughs> we slept on a big, I feel like it's like humongous though. I, I slept yeah. I feel like our cane was not big at all. I don't know, this bed's really big, but it was comfortable. I had to do some work stuff, homework stuff um, until like what, midnight, so I'm so really tired. tired. But I feel like I got really rested. I'm sore after driving the car all day. Same here. We're gonna see what breakfast uh, they got here and then uh, hit the road. We got a nice view, nice morning. It's not too chilly out. And I think only, I looked eight and a half hours to where we're going. I got most of the car packed while Tamer was um, waking up this morning. So we just have a couple of things to pack still. Back in the car, Piper's anxious. She's ready to go. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna be back in Arizona today and then we move in tomorrow. on the road. Colorado is probably like my favorite um, place that we drive through when we go to North Dakota and back to Arizona. We usually listen to Jim Harold's podcast uh, just talking about like different spooky stories. It's pretty entertaining. I think actually isn't this where Skinwalker Ranch is? If you're ever in uh, Moab, Utah, this place is really good. Um, what is it called again? Bella's, Bella's uh, Desert. What is it? Bella's Desert. Uh, Desert. Yeah, Desert Bella's Desert Inn. Inn. Yeah. 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 Y
graduated with my bachelor's degree in 2020, Tanner was going to go fly for the airlines, but because of what happened in 2020, he could no longer go fly because they were laying people off. They canceled his like training program for the airline, and uh, my program to go to get my master's degree was canceled. And so when we were presented with the opportunity to move to Arizona, we took it uh, because we eventually wanted to move there anyways, regardless. And when we got there, we had a friend that lived there in uh, this the complex in South Scottsdale. And we were on the rooftop in his hot tub and he was telling us about real estate investing and business and we were just like soaking, soaking it all in and just we our eyes were starting to open to like a whole new world and so Tanner started looking into like just different side hustles business ventures and he had always done like side hustles and stuff like that in North Dakota but when I think we were approaching like reselling and flipping cars he did that in North Dakota but from his perspective he always did mechanical things and he didn't like have a shop or like a garage because we live in an apartment now in Arizona or the tools to be able to do that so it just wasn't something that like crossed his mind and so I worked some odds and end jobs and he um did a little bit of DoorDash yeah I did a little bit of DoorDash and he like was looking at different side hustles like wholesaling like uh that guy that we know that we lived in South Scott still did wholesaling real estate which is essentially just finding a deal, um, a property that's can be on market or off market, and it's a homeowner that is distressed or they want to sell, and essentially you find a buyer for it and you just get a fee. Um, simplest way to put it, right? Yeah, you're just finding, you know, usually when you're going to wholesale it, you're going to wholesale it to an end buyer, somebody who is actually going to take possession of the home and either do a fix and flip on it, so they're going to buy it. And then uh, you know, put some money and time into it, get it all fixed up, and then go relist it. Usually on market with a realtor uh, for like the actual actual end buyer, which would be the homeowner, to come in. Um, so basically, what you're doing is you get find or you get good at finding, you know, what makes a deal a deal, and you know, going into like everything that we're doing now. I'm not going to go all into it, but it kind of translates from when it all started in North Dakota when I was flipping cars and um, I think what you're getting into now when we moved down here and started getting into different side hustles, knowing what makes a deal a deal kind of translated into everything else that we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Because like I said, we weren't like focused on reselling. So our stories kind of can get confusing uh, because Tanner has been flipping stuff for the last 15 years since I've met him. And uh, we did some stuff together in North Dakota to make some extra money. And uh, then we moved down there. We tried Amazon FBA. We like um, sold a whole bunch of different stuff, private label, and ultimately lost money. Tanner re uh, what is it? Um, recouped some of the funds by selling stuff on the side of the road. <laughs> it was so funny. North Scottsdale Road set up a boom. Yeah, selling stuff and recouped a lot of the money but still probably lost a little bit I'm guessing and then we tried um then we started flipping or reselling books on Amazon which is actually how Amazon started and that was pretty profitable but then we wanted to scale it and we had no knowledge in scaling and Amazon also imposed restock limits so you couldn't send in a whole bunch of inventory anymore and so that kind of like shredded the hope that we had to scale it and it's not something honestly that we wanted to do anyways. Yeah, we still like felt tied to like somebody else kind of controlling and dictating. Yeah, the doing. business. It's it's not really like your business, you know, it's Amazon's business and you're just selling on it, which I think it's still it depends on like what business model you want to do, but for us that's not something that like long term we saw ourselves doing. And again the margins are usually pretty slim. So if you see all these guys on like Instagram flaunting like, oh, I'm making a million dollars a year on Amazon. It's like, well, their profit's probably like 10%, maybe 20%. Yeah. It's like 100, 200K, and that doesn't factor in any employees either. That's like product I'd after say, product in the Amazon piece. Yeah, I'd say Amazon, like a lot of those numbers, hover around like 10 to 15%. Yeah, on average, drop shipping, like all those. And so that's why we, we tried those. You know, we love like econ we learned a lot but we went back 
to Arizona. We were in North Dakota for about six months in 2021 after losing our asses. And bless you. And um, we were com contemplating staying in North Dakota, but we just realized we changed so much, so we wanted to go back. And we didn't get that far. They just go that far. We told ourselves. So we're going to go figure it out. And that's what we did. We went back down to Arizona with, like, no money. And we were thinking, and I remember I was flipping some furniture for fun out of our first apartment, making, like, 400 bucks a week or something. Uh, nothing crazy. Just doing it for fun. Again, painting the nightstands and chairs, like, you know, getting chairs from Goodwill and clean them up, making, you know, 100 bucks off of it. And it was fun. And that's what I did. And then we are thinking... What if we just like doubled down on that and tried that and went all in on it? And Tanner wasn't sure. Like in the beginning, you were not convinced that we that's what we should do yeah. before we went back to Arizona. But I told him like, let's just do it. Let's trust. And that was before like we ever heard of like Ryan Pineda or anybody like that. We just did it on our own. And we went back down there. We started flipping kind of like all furniture, a tiny, tiny storage unit, like five feet by um, five feet, I think. And well, we were falling on a budget. We, mm -hmm. When we came back down, we had like a, I don't know what year, like early 2000s Dodge minivan that was like all rusted out. Mm -hmm. Drove straight through from North Dakota to Arizona. And then like the next day we started getting the house. We got that. Yeah. We left tiny. Paxton with our family for a couple weeks because they wanted to see him and spend some time with him. And they flew him down so he didn't have to make the drive with us. Yeah. But Gave us time to get up and going. The next day we just got after it. We got that tiny little storage unit and then we started going around to thrift stores. Use friends truck one, that same friend that lived in South Scottsdale. We used his truck when we could. Yeah, um, but to start we used the van. Yeah, we used the van. Until we ended up busting out the back window on it. I busted out the back window on accident. We just taped it. <laughs> it's crazy like where we accidents back there. It's crazy um like where we started we scaled up really really quickly and just then got really narrowed down on just couches because they sold so quick and we made quite a bit so like instead of with amazon you know ordering all this product because you have to have it to sell it which if you're having a product based business usually you do unless you're drop shipping uh you have to have the product and with us we could buy or, you know, eventually we learned how to narrow in our systems, get everything, most of our things for free. And um, that's why we recommend this is like the best business model to start because we would get couches, say for a hundred bucks, sell it for $500 the next day after cleaning it. And we did it over and over and over again. And in somewhere like Phoenix, Arizona, this is possible to scale to, we did like 20, 25 K months. And, uh, it's a business that you could scale up even further. Like I heard of this lady that has a luxury resale business, like selling luxury and they do like 50 million a year. So you can really do like anything you set your mind to with any business. It's just your ability to know how to grow it and finding like your market and who you're going to sell to. But for us, that's what we scaled to. We thought we didn't want to do this forever and uh, we love flipping. We'll always do it for fun. So that's where we transitioned our business into um, an online based like luxury furniture startup and now we sell new furniture and I absolutely love it it's my baby and uh, still flip stuff for fun but we utilize the drop shipping model so we have our suppliers we have logistical companies that ship everything for us so we don't have to have products that's what allows us to um you know be back and forth that business model as well as reselling couches just last week in our small market did we flip three we flipped three in north dakota small town north dakota of sixty thousand people and uh we made on the first one six hundred dollars profit within 24 hours 
that's something you desire is to be location free and be able to be on your own time it's um, available to you because this is something that you can pick up and set down and it's something that's more quick like we said that was within a week that we did that with the couches and I think the price that we had into all of them one of them we paid a little bit more because it was the cloud couch but I think we made that was $1,500 profit but I think revenue we made over $2,000 so we spent probably just over five, six hundred bucks on all of them. And most of the inventory though that we got in Arizona was free. So we paid for our inventory in Bismarck uh, in North Dakota, but in Arizona we got most of it for free. But that's the business model that we finally did after trying so many things that we had success with. And then we realized we put everything together just based on everything we've done and since Tanner started when he was 15 to now it's a business that you can flip anything you can resell anything as long as you have the skills and the know-how to be able to look for deals know what a deal is you know build the foundational business skills of knowing your customer good customer service blah 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 all that stuff and have the good business foundational skills this can be applicable to any niche, any market, and give you the skills to then go and start other businesses, which is what we've done since doing that. Versus we did like it backwards before where we tried to do other businesses that were more capital heavy in the beginning where they required so much money and time to get started before you ever saw success. And it just like, a lot of people just burn themselves into the ground by doing that. And this, this model of reselling just like fixed it for us. It allowed us to the grace to be able to do what we needed to do, you know, make what we needed to make more quickly and have like success. Yeah, because I always wanted to get into wholesaling real estate too, but like many business models, it takes not a ton of capital um, to get started, but you know, a lot of time, and there's a time delay, even if you did get a deal, you're looking at at least three to six months before you're, you're actually going to see any
long distance for flying. We've been all or nothing, everything we do, we go all in, and that's the attitude you have to have if you're gonna be successful. You can't tiptoe and be in and out of whatever you're doing because then you're never gonna get the life that you truly want. But business isn't glamorous, and that's why me and Tanner are so authentic uh, because some people are like, oh, I, you know, you guys had to go through such a rough path and it might not seem typical, but it is. It's 99.9% .9 of people that you see online that are flaunting making all this money and they say, oh, I had hard times or whatever and that's all they say about it. But no one actually shows or discusses like what going through that is like. And it's not that you have to, everyone's journey is different and their struggles are different. But business is not easy, it's not glamorous, it's a lot of hard. And uh, like Layla Hermosi says, you know, you're often going to be in a season of hard, but you know that it's just a season and uh, it means that you're growing. So that's, that's the season that we've been in numerous times and that's the season we're in now where we're going all in on other businesses and it's a season of hard where we're, we just have so much going on, but it's worth it and it's fulfilling and it's, it's just crazy. How, how much has changed in the last four years. It's insane. But we're gonna be checking in after we get there, two and a half hours left, uh, checking into our Airbnb, going for a walk, probably getting dinner. And then tomorrow we have a long day moving in. We have a free elevator reserved at our place, so we are going to try to get all of our big furniture, like our mattresses and that stuff. And all of our stuff from our storage moved in. And uh, yeah, we'll show you guys that. We're gonna finish out this vlog when we get back to Arizona. And then we're gonna do like an apartment tour and move in vlog as well. Yeah, Tanner, Tanner uh, has been the trooper. I had to, like I said, I had to stay up really late last night and do homework. So yeah, I'm, I'm back in uh, to get my master's degree in philosophy and business administration. Not because I feel that I need it, but I'm someone who values education. Just like we're in many masterminds and courses and all these different things to always further our ed education and I'm a big learner I'm a lifelong learner and that's something that I love to do so I had to write some papers last night and uh, Tanner said that he would drive today so I can uh, finish that up and then finish up tonight before we move in tomorrow officially made it here we just got done checking into our airbnb and then walked piper a little bit so she wasn't like all crazy <laughs> but now we're gonna go get a bite to eat at the cheesecake factory and then probably go walk around a little bit and just unwind it's only six o'clock i don't know it feels way later but we're used to central time which is two hours ahead of here so it feels way later yeah it feels, feels good to be back though but it feels like we jumped through like a time a time warp or a portal or something and it just like poof all of a sudden now we're back in this reality it's it's weird it's crazy it takes like an adjustment though like getting used to it back here but kind of but, like yeah. migraine from driving that much yeah i was gonna say plus just being cooped in a car for <clears throat> almost 13 and a half hours yesterday eight and a half hours today that's just driving yeah, it's probably like 10 hours too. Yeah. How long have we had her? Ooh. What'd you get, Pax? What'd you get? <laughs> What's going on, guys? We are actually checking out of our Airbnb right now, and we are going to take Piper to the park. It's probably like 7.30. And then we have a box truck we have to pick up. 
we have a ton of stuff that we have to do uh like picking stuff up from our storage unit target runs like all that crazy stuff today and we have to take advantage of it because we have a free elevator reserved only for today at our new place so we're gonna do that and we'll bring you guys along with for, for the first little bit this morning and then we're gonna do an actual like move-in apartment tour like all that kind of stuff as well so if you're interested Make sure to subscribe to Tanner. He's just making sure everything's good and we didn't forget anything inside of the Airbnb. Then we're gonna head out. Right, Mike? Are you so excited? I wanna ride my scooter. Are you excited? Here's your ball. Look. Can I throw it? Are you ready? Can let's I wait, let's wait. It, we'll get over here first. Okay. Oh, she wants her ball. We are headed to get Paxton's um, like comforter thing that uh, from this lady. She sells stuff on Amazon and gets like returns from damaged packaging and stuff. Uh, so we are going to pick that up now. I'm getting it for like thirty dollars, I believe, uh, thirty or forty, and they sell for like four or five times that new so well it is new but on amazon or like in a store so i'm getting a really good deal on that we're gonna go pick it up now but on the way we decided to stop by tanner's first store your biggest what do you want uh, i'll say i'll deal yeah. so um it's we used to live in this area and when we were flipping stuff full time like i said before we were constantly picking up and delivering stuff, driving through different neighborhoods, just like this one. And I think it was actually my very first day. Yeah, it was like your first day and it was- I had no clue what yeah. I was doing. It took two years of following up and it was like your biggest deal. And it was from my f very first day doing this. So we, mm -hmm. I think we added like 50 houses the first day. And then we got back to our apartment after we were done for the day, um, you know, doing our pickups and deliveries and cleaning stuff. And I just started taking action. Cold called all these people on this same exact iPhone right here still. It's crazy. And cold called and texting them. And then this particular lady, I got a hold of her and she just said, hey, it's not for sale at the moment. Should I save your number for future reference? And I just said, you know, just made a friend. Don't make it about, oh, we, you know, you want to sell your house or any of that. Just made a friend and continued to stay in touch for over two years. And just this past, I think April is when we, mid-April, mid finally got it under contract. And then um, ended up wholesaling it to a fix and flipper. And now we're gonna go drive past. It's been, what, six, almost five, five almost six, six months. months. Yeah. So we're gonna see if they, you know, what progress they've made on it, check it out now. But, but yeah, I literally remember too, we were driving through um, this area, delivering a couch, and then I just, while we were going through, I had this app on my phone pulled up called Deal Machine, and I just would add each house. And at the end of the week, or end of the day, um, start hitting up the homeowners. But it's coming up right here to the right. You know, this, this next one right here. Oh. Looks like they haven't quite touched it yet. Huh, what the heck? But that's it. There's a lock box on it, so they're probably- They might be doing the inside first and then the yeah. outside. Cause this is a fixed and flipped house right here. You can't see, hold on, my they're camera's not focused. Yeah, see it's like fixed up, you can see. But yeah, this was technically like his first deal that he found and then the biggest one he closed. It was kind of funny cause it was the first day like he actually went like was looking for deals that would drive him for dollars. And it was like the first person that showed interest in selling. And then he ended up closing two years later. So it was kind of crazy. Fortune is always in the follow-up. With everything. That's what we tell you, like, reselling is the easiest way to learn, like, foundational business skills while making money quickly, and it's forgiving. It's a very forgiving business model, and it allows you to get into other things. It's just, like, you know, best of both worlds. And uh, it helped Tanner, you know, find that deal, and then, you know, one thing leads to another, and you're just consistent, and show up, and follow up, and anything that you want will happen. But we're gonna go pick up his comforter, the insert for his comforter. And then we gotta now. get the U-Haul truck in like an hour. Yeah, and then we gotta go get the U-Haul in an hour. We have it for like 
10 hours today. Busy day today. Yeah, really, really busy. But we're gonna uh, finish this off here soon for you guys. And then if you wanna watch like the actual moving in process and get a sneak peek at our place, then you can. You gotta get, um, get used to driving here again. <laughs> You, you can uh, follow, make sure to follow Tanner, subscribe to Tanner, and you can watch that next one. It'll probably come up like, you know, within a couple of days after you guys are seeing this one. Where should we put it? I'll probably just hold it. Yeah. But at least it's like in a package and not super big. But it's super nice. This is what we got. Um, she, like I said, gets them, like has a business doing this. And these are like, not returns, but they're damaged. They're brand new. So I got it for $30. You can find so many good deals down here for just I know, all kinds crazy. of stuff. It's literally crazy. I, that's why I love living here too. You find such good deals on Facebook and people who just have like liquidated stuff where it's like brand new. That's what I'm gonna do with a vacuum and like that kind of stuff too is I found like a nice Dyson vacuum that sells for probably 600 new and get it for less than 200 bucks. Well yeah, our budget initially, obviously we're always gonna add and like change things or whatever, but our budget initially moving in beds, couches, you know, vacuum pots and pans and all of that is I think 4,000. Uh-huh. So let's see. Uh, I'm curious, like what we all can get. Yeah, I'm super excited. I've I'm, been I'm thinking that just knowing us, obviously there's some things that like buying food or like cleaning supplies, things like that, that like, you can't get for free or you can't like try to really wiggle with unless you have the Costco membership, which we got or like coupons or things like that. But me and Tanner, no matter how much money we ever make, we'll never like overpay for things. And uh, I think there was a good example that you gave like Mark, Cuban? Yeah. That's what it is. He'll like fly yes. on private jets, but then he buys toilet paper in bulk to save yeah, money. Yeah, Ty Lopez was telling a story. He said, yeah, I just flew with Mark Cuban last week. And as we were getting on his private jet, he was telling me about uh, how he buys toilet paper in bulk to save whatever, you know, just by buying in bulk. Yeah, I that's how I intend it. Uh, just so I don't have to go to the store so many damn times. I know, it's it's annoying having to go to the store. So we're just going to do that, and that's what we're doing. And then whatever's left over, we have for furniture. Of course, I have my own brand, and we're going to furnish our place with that. But we just like need stuff right now. And then I'm always going to be changing stuff out, and we'll order stuff from our own brand as well. But now we're going to go pick up the U-Haul. It's almost 9 o'clock. And then we're going to, I think, go load up the stuff from our storage unit and see kind of where we're at, maybe get lunch, and then go to our orientation at our new place. We are at our storage units, and any of you who have been watching Tanner for a long time know that this is actually the storage unit where we operated the longest for our uh, couch flipping business. So it's pretty nostalgic to be back here, picking up our stuff and moving into our dream apartment. It's pretty crazy. Uh, Tanner and Paxton have the U-Haul, and they are on their way here. They should be here any minute. Me and Piper are gonna wait for them. And then we're gonna load up all of our stuff from the storage unit into the box truck. And then from there, we probably have like an hour and a half until we have to do our orientation. So we'll probably get lunch <clears throat> and maybe like do a target run or something. Tanner just got here, so we're gonna go and pack everything up. <laughs> I think he's actually vlogging for you guys too. <laughs> Paxton, how was the ride? Interesting. Interesting. You opening that up? We got him trained already, guys. Here, you know, set open that up. Ooh. And they gave us a dolly too. Yeah, this is plenty big for all this of our stuff. This thing was sh shaking, rattling, and everything. All right, we're gonna pack everything. All right, we just got done uh, loading up the box truck full of our stuff and storage unit. We got about an hour to spare, so we're gonna go get a, maybe a snack and a drink. And then our apartment we're moving into is just right there across the street. And we're gonna get get everything unloaded after like getting our keys. And then I think- um, We have a lot of errands now, like Target, Yeah, and 
I think some beds we're going to try to pick up and then see if we can find a couch. It's time to head over. We are going to go in the parking garage and then we're going to uh, come back and get the U-Haul in a little bit once we know where to bring it. But it's about time, we're gonna do our orientation. Which way do we go here? I think this way. <laughs> She's freaking out. This is literally insane, guys, watching something that you've been playing out in your mind for literally years on end play out Piper, come on. in real life in the present. It's just like surreal. I don't know. What do you feel? I know. I don't have any words, honestly, but this is where we're going to cut it off, guys. If you want to watch the move-in vlog, get an apartment tour. Make sure make to sure follow to, along. Make sure to follow along. We'll see you guys in the next one.